Okay, so... So after uh, last night's drive, our top priority for sure is going to the brakes. And, uh, and this should give us a clue as to why we might be having some issues. So, uh, yeah. I think it's time to uh, properly fix these drum brakes and see if that doesn't help us out much. <laughs> so that was fun. So uh, I couldn't get the drum off and I'm like, alright, well let's bust out the propane torch or the, the map torch real quick. So there's some WD-40 in there for a little bit and I just heated the circle once, twice, three times. I heard like a pop here, went around, another pop, went around here again and just plunk, and the whole thing popped. So I think we're free. Holy shit, it actually worked. Wow, okay, so she was just stuck on the hub. Alright. Freaking drum pad! There's not even a shoe left in this thing. What the fuck is that? Oh my god! Wow, that's glorious right there. That is oh my god. The seal isn't even on the fucking thing, man. Holy shit! Oh, that's 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 nice. That's real nice. Wow. Okay, looks like we're getting some uh, proper hardware. Yeah. All right, well, we got the other side off, and at least this side looks a bit more complete, eh? Cool. There's a crack here, but, you know, at least everything's still attached. The parking brake did work on this side. So, uh, yeah. With this one, um, I just had to rotate it while I was pulling it, you know, because pulling it by itself, it wasn't unlocking. I popped out the rubber backs to it, but the star didn't want to budge, unsurprisingly. They never do. So, uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna do a little, uh, drum overhaul. This side looks pretty good. The other side, mm, not so much, but, um, I'm probably going to do the, uh, the master cylinders just because those, those damn bleeders are, are probably shot. I, I don't see any way that I'm gonna be able to get them off. So, alright, I guess we're gonna do master cylinders, pads, and a, and a hardware kit. And uh, see if we at least get some brakes out of this thing. These lines look replaced, but we'll see if the uh, fittings want to let go or not. <sighs> Alright, so these drums are not looking super hot. But they're also not the worst thing in the world. You know, these things are fucking thick as hell. There's so much meat. And if you look inside the actual brake surface, like, they look pretty good. I can't really complain about the insides. You know, they don't look bad. So I'm going to do the cheap thing, and I'm going to tap off some rust and just coat these real quick. Save me 50 bucks, maybe more, depends where you buy from. But we're kind of doing this on the, on, the, on the low buck budget build, you know. I don't feel like spending too much. I already spent, I don't know how much, on, on just the rear brake components. So this time around we're going to do some paint and see if we can make these things last just a little bit longer. Okay, so here's the difference after, I don't know, maybe half an hour work. So, I sat here and used one of these, uh, these welding, I don't know what the hell you call these things, but they're, they're slag hammers, I guess. But I tried to take off all the big chunks, tried to grind it down as best I could with the grinder. Yeah, I got the inside a little bit too. But, the before and after should be pretty telling. Is it worth it? I don't know. Depends how expensive it is. For me, yeah, I'm kind of doing this on the cheap. So we're going to hit this with some paint and uh, continue. So, here we are. We're a typical uh, cold galvanized coating. So uh, we're going to see if this holds up a little better. It only really needs one coat. This stuff goes on kind of thick and, you know, supposedly just does the job. So we're going to see if that doesn't uh, help keep this all together for a little longer. Sweet. All right, so we're undoing the damage right now, and I think we have it pretty much stripped down. So we have our wheel cylinder out, we have our brakes out, we have all the hardware that's left over. And I kind of just lay it out sort of the way I took it off. Um, it's best to do one side at a time, so that way when you try to put this together and you forget exactly how it goes together, you can reference the other side. So I took the shitty one apart first so we can get it right, and then we can move over and do the other side. 
Uh, before I do that, though, I want to see if I can uh, get rid of some of this rust and maybe hit it with a with a coat of some kind of paint. Because, uh, yeah, this, this thing's going to need some work, but I think every little drop of extra paint will count. Uh, luckily, this came out pretty easy. A little WD-40 and a little bit of heat and, you know, just, just rocking the, um, the flare nut wrench back and forth a little bit. And she actually came free. But that's mostly because that's a new line. So hopefully the other line should come off. But uh, yeah, we're going to sit here and we're going to scrub and clean and paint and uh, throw some shit back together. All right, here we are after a bit of a quick scrub. Just trying to hit it real quick. You know, give it a good 10 to 15 minutes just to get all the loose crap off. All right, so let's take a look at the spoils we got here. So... The, this is the wheel cylinder right here. This is what actually makes the action happen. Uh, there's a left and a right side. It depends which side the bleeder's on. Um, so with this replacement that we got here, this was a Weaver WCA17508. It comes with just about everything except for these pegs. So if your pegs are in bad shape, you'll have to get new ones. Didn't notice that, but oh well. This right here is the parking brake kit right here, which is separate from the master uh, uh, shoe shoe kit. So this is all the springs and stuff to hold the par um, to hold the brakes down. But this is the self adjuster for your parking brake. So they're separate. And on advance, see each one of these kits is freaking ten dollars a piece. But whatever. To get your star and your cap and all your other wires and crap. Same thing on this, uh, this, this one's gold for some reason, but we got a gold one. And this one, you guys got, comes with rubber boots. Um, the shoes, they look identical. It's just one has a lot of pad, one has a little pad. And that on each side. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna dump this, uh, wheel cylinder in. Does not come with hardware, so you gotta reuse the old bolts. Again, another thing to watch out for in case your old bolts snap. Good luck. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna start throwing this stuff on. All right, well there we go. It's all coated, so hopefully that lasts a little bit. Now let's start putting all the pretty parts on. Okay, so many hours later, we finally have this damn thing together. So what a friggin' clusterfuck this thing is. I hate drum brakes, they take forever. So, reused this piece and painted it. Same with the spring, there's only one spring. It goes towards the front. Um, the little pushy bits that go into the master, or the, not the master, the wheel cylinder, they're reused and painted. Um, there's a little washer here that was on the old brake. I put that on the new one, just so there's a little slippage. Um, the e-brake cable, so we got this wire that goes into here. The spring goes through that to hold that in place. That goes to this weird bracket here. Looks into the bottom. Then we have the white spring to put tension, and then the star adjuster. Don't forget to put your cable in there. The, uh, parking brake cable. Uh, yeah. Springs. There's a... Uh, one of these caps go on each end of the spring. I think usually when I do it, I, I only use the one on the end. So I looked at a diagram and went, oh yeah, look at that. Put one on each side. It's probably why there's so many damn caps in the bag, huh? Drew. Uh, yeah, and everything's painted. So I'm just going to clean the schmoo out of this line, put that back in, um, and then we can start on the other side. <laughs> so... Uh, I don't think I showed this on the other side, but um, I'm adding anti-seize to these these uh, tabs over here because this is where the uh, the shoes actually ride on. So good old, uh, I think this is nickel anti-seize or whatever. Tin can man stuff. So yeah, any uh, important connection that is going to be doing some rotating and moving. I'm getting a little dab on there. So hopefully they slide freely for a little while. Almost there, baby. Almost there. And just like that, we've got side two complete. Oh, what a pain in the balls. Definitely goes a lot easier the second time, though. Cool. Okay, I guess now it's just um, adjusting the, the drums, the, uh, the star, to pop them out enough that there's, like, basically no drag. Like, you want them to just barely start to touch the, uh, the drums so they're properly set. So, all right. Okay, so I just cracked uh, the lid off of this brake booster, and, uh, hmm, gee, I wonder why my brakes suck so much. There's not even any freaking fluid in the back reservoir. There's also some floaters in here, so I want to see if I can, um, suck out some of that crap, because last thing we want is shit going into our brake lines. 
So uh, yeah, we're going to do a proper uh, flush front or rear and uh, see if that gets us anywhere. So, can you tell what's clean and what's not? Wow, it's a bit of a difference. Also, I uh, went through and took this rubber gasket off and cleaned it real well and painted both sides. So maybe that'll uh, help hold off the rust for a little bit. Anyway, brake fluid is hydroscopic, meaning that it likes to absorb moisture from the air. So do not leave it uncovered for very long. Okay, I guess I'm going to crack a bleeder and uh, see how long it takes for us to get fluid out. Hopefully there's no other leaks. Okay, now it's on to the bleeding. So this is my one-man bleeder setup. It's just a hose. You put it on, and you run it down to a bottle with liquid. And you make sure that the end is submerged. And basically you can push it and push the bubbles out. And when it returns, it sucks fluid back. So you can push air out, but it sucks fluid in. It's kind of like a one-way check valve. So if you only got one dude, then you can still bleed your brakes. So we're gonna, um, you always start from the farthest wheel. Now since the rear is separate, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's, it's this one's the farthest one, and then you do the next closest and next closest, but the front and the rear are on separate circuits, so. Okay, that one's good. I'll switch over to the other side. Okay, I just bled that side. Went pretty quick. Now this pedal's feeling good, baby. Before this thing used to drop basically to the floor, we were not getting any action. Now, it feels pretty good. I like that. I might actually be able to stop the damn thing now. Cool. And as you can see, we got free spin on both sides. And check the parking brake here. See if those bastards work. Uh -oh. uh, so either this cable isn't connected or it's got to be uh, tightened up a little more. Again, that'll require looking at this mess. That's a whole other story of fuckery that I gotta check out. But, uh, yeah. This one's not looking too hot anyway. So I could always try to replace that later. But anyway, at least we can stop now. Cool. Well, I don't know, might, might put the tires on, might not. But uh, I guess we're basically done for tonight. Whew. I haven't done one of these in a while. Okay, so here we are on the daylight and uh, it's all much easier to see what happened. So the uh, the parking brake cable snapped. So I'll have to put a new one on. So all right, I guess we'll ignore that for now. At least we got one wheel parking. So uh, I guess I'm gonna slap a little bit of paint somewhere, and uh, we're just gonna finish this up. All right, here we are in the heap of jeep. Gonna go to the scrap yard. To the scrap yard. Can I? Can I? What's this? No. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah, going to the scrapyard. Let's see what kind of chunk of change we can get. Right now, it's actually in closed loop, so that's cool. It's running pretty good. If you look at that. Oops, fuck me. Doot, doot. This button. Um, idle's calm down. Voltage is great. TPS is chilling. Got a nice little sensor swing. She's nice and happy with that. Cool. And I think everybody else is okay, so. Yeah. These one and a half gallons. Wish me the best. Here we go. Okay, so let's the fun begin. So first part is trying to wrestle this damn thing out. What a pain in the balls this is. But vice grips on the one end, I had to clean out the uh, all the little tabs and then push them down one by one to the flathead and angle this right to finally get it out of the hole. What a pain in the balls. Fuck. Okay, now that that's done, and I know that's gonna work, 
I guess I'll take the tire off and uh, we'll remove the other end. All right, so here we are after uh, a couple hundred miles driving around on these things so we can see where uh, the brake dust lands and all that stuff. So the drums, or the rotors, the drums, the drums don't look terrible, but I am no noticing surface rust on this. I don't know if that's the zinc uh, in that paint that's um, corroding as a sacrificial metal or what. But, oh well. So, now the fun part of trying to actually get to our, um, our uh, parking brake cable. So we can see it's got that same kind of bullshit um, slide connector here that shouldn't be too bad to get out, but wrestling the other end out is going to be the pain in the ass. So I'm going to have to see what and all has to get taken apart to do this. Maybe we can just loosen up the star adjuster and then we can sneak it out. We'll see. But this may or may not suck. Okay, so that actually wasn't bad at all. So I took uh, some vice grips to pull this spring off and then I could pretty easily wiggle everything out. So I pulled off the, uh, the retainer clip and uh, pulled out the star adjuster and we got plenty of room in there. So all you got to do is pull back the spring a little bit and uh, then you can wiggle that straight out. So you have to cock it at an angle. But then it comes right out. Cool. So we'll just come over here, push those tabs in, pull it through, and then we can put the new one in. Easy beans. Okay, so here we've got some Rebestos uh, BC93591. They seem to be the same for left and right. But this is what you get. So this is the uh, the end by the uh, transmission. That clips in there into that, that, uh, that splitter. And then it runs around to the part that goes into the wheel. The spring on this one looks a little thicker, but otherwise seems to be pretty much the same stuff. So don't worry about the length, obviously it's going to get pulled in, but we should be good to go. So we'll snap, snap this in place, pop that in there, and then run it to the, the middle. Okay, so now we got this end popped in over here. You notice it's a lot shorter than the other one, um, but part of that's probably due to the spring. We can pull it out a little bit, uh, but right now what I'm doing is working on um, loosening this up and it's actually kind of working so I'm using my impact and uh, I got this back part clamped because when I was clamping on this part it was just moving that up but it's good that both of these are actually unstuck I'm honestly amazed because if you saw what it looked like before it's so rusted and crap but we're actually getting movement so I've got my Milwaukee over here with a nice six point and I got it on the lowest setting and I'm just like slowly letting it tap just tick 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 and it's actually slowly uh, re re like cutting the threads basically like cutting all the rust off so it's actually getting somewhere I was really waiting for this thing to snap but it hasn't snapped yet but now that I said that it's probably gonna snap but uh yeah I'm gonna keep messing with this a little longer because I think we're gonna have to extend it just a bit to be able to really get on to uh, that bracket so hopefully we can uh, get this to work but things are looking good I didn't want to use uh, heat <coughs> or a torch or anything because I know for a fact that my gas tank leaks it leaks all the way down to three quarters of a tank I found that out the hard way when I filled it up and it started dripping so yeah okay we're gonna keep tap tap tapping on this okay so we got the other side done make sure you put your freaking star in the right direction I fucked that up but <laughs> Just pop the spring off and flip it around so that's new cable number two so even though that the old one was still connected it was really stiff and didn't want to slide in and out so we got the new one over here it's definitely best to replace them in a pair so they're the same length and you know just all that shit this is brakes this is safety you want to make sure your brakes actually work so okay let's spin that around i actually got the um the bracket off so both the nuts actually came off that that whole thing and actually like i can't believe that that honestly blows my mind that that thing came back to life but uh yeah so we're going to put the bracket on and tighten everything back up. All right, so the final step is to come over here and do this. So the bracket has a, uh, like, a like an opening. So you turn it 90 degrees, push them in, and then you rotate the bracket back. All right, so it's, it's this way. You push it in and then rotate it, and then it'll lock into place. And then we can push our rod through and start tightening this nut. So we have to put the drum on, make sure the drum is loose and the stars are adjusted, and then we'll start tightening this until our parking brake is actually uh, in the right area. Then we put the lock nut on the end to make sure it stays in place. So it's a fun little adjustment game, but you want to make sure the parking brake works and it's not holding the drums the entire time. So let's start playing with that. 
I guess now this kind of comes down to personal preference. But when I push on this, there's like a lot of tension on that. Like it feels like a brake pedal right now. But I gotta push it pretty hard. Like that usually goes a lot farther down. So I guess you could keep it tight for now. And if it loosens up, it loosens up a little bit. But that might even be a little too tight for me. So maybe I'll loosen it up a little bit, but I don't know. Just kind of find yourself a, a good pedal feel. All right, so once you've played with it a few times and you got it where you want it to be, the final step is to put on the lock nut on the back here and tighten them up. So what you do is you hold the main slider with one wrench and you take another wrench and you tighten them um, together. And that locks the whole assembly in place. So you take this guy and slide it up here and you, you tighten them together. So you hold the one and you tighten the other. The goal is to tighten them together so that they, they pull on the bolt a little and then it won't come out. And there you go. Parking brake is now adjusted and good to go. So we are set. I had this on so I could tighten the original nut because it was sliding the, uh, it was twisting the, the rod instead of going on. But yeah, there we go. So put the wheels back on and uh, we're done. Okay, tires are on. Nice free spin, no drag or anything. And we're locked. All right, excellent. Okay. So I guess that's how we do uh, drum brakes and parking brakes for the MJ. Oh boy, now we can stop again. Hooray! And park too. Sweet. <laughs>